Principles of Virology is a new kind of textbook. Uh, I like to think of it as uh, getting some unity out of diversity because there are so many different viruses and yet they all have a universal pathway that they have to follow through. It considers viruses according to steps of the infectious cycle and it tries to bring principles to the teaching of the subject. And this is really different from the way other books have written about viruses in the past, which is mainly virus by virus. We wanted to go back to the notion that if we could understand something well enough to write about principles, we could also teach students in a far more effective way. I think this book offers harmony in the sense that it's written by four expert virologists with different expertise and different points of view. But when we come together to write the text, we write it with a common voice. And this is going to greatly benefit a student because it's that same voice that carries through each of the chapters. One of my major roles is organizer of getting these um, chapters completed. In terms of writing, I'm responsible for the chapters on DNA viruses and also a large number of other topics um, to, about which I've had to learn a great deal. I was the lead author on chapters that deal with RNA viruses as well as on other topics not directly to what I've been working on. That's one of the neat things about this textbook. You get to write about things that you may not have worked on in your career and you end up learning a lot as well. And my role is in the area of retrovirology. I wrote a number of the chapters that dealt with various aspects of retrovirology and also a number that actually challenged my knowledge. And I was responsible for all the chapters on immunology and pathogenesis and in addition I took the lead on a chapter on vaccines. The original writing of the textbook took approximately five years. The revision has taken us approximately two years. And that entailed reading the old text, uh, gaining new information that had to be added, and then rewriting it all again. Every time we do a new edition, we're going back to first principles and thinking about is this the best way to present the material for students? So there's a lot of intellectual work, and then the actual writing takes far longer than anyone could guess. As a new author to this text, it took quite a bit of time, because my chapters had to do with immunology and pathogenesis, which are complex disciplines. And therefore, it required some effort to think about how to convey these con complex concepts to a student who may not have had immunology uh, experience before. After each of us writes a chapter, we all get together and it's read aloud and we all listen to it and the person reading it is not the person who has written it. And you'd be amazed at how many difficult passages of writing you pick up just by reading it aloud. It takes a lot longer, but we think in the end it results in a far more readable text. So we have developed quite precise forms to use in our writing, for example, not ascribing to viruses any human actions and also being very careful not to use vague words wherever we can avoid it. We think carefully about what we want to illustrate. Uh, we then draw some figures. Sometimes we can see figures that we can use. And we work with a wonderful artist who has the ability to take the, these ideas and make beautiful pictures. Deciding what to include is based on, I think, how an illustration can present and illuminate a principle in a way that's much clearer than words. And then we sit down individually with our artist who draws out the final figures in glorious color. And the result is it's much easier to understand what we're writing. At the end of this process of going through the textbook, I suspect that many students won't remember lots of the details of the textbook. And that's okay. What I would actually care that they take away from this is the passion that we all as co-authors share about this fascinating field and that they carry that forward with them and bear in mind that viruses have been important not just in understanding how viruses cause disease but understanding basic elements of cell biology and cancer um, and evolution. Um, I think I want students to get a really broad an overarching appreciation of the science of virology 
Um, its beauty is an actual science, but also its impact on disease and other aspects of human life and health. And I hope that some of them will leave with an appreciation of the actual elegance of the book itself and how we've managed to exploit that, we hope, to present virology in a really clear way. My favorite virus is poliovirus. And that's not just because it's the virus I've spent 35 years working on, but it's an amazing virus. It's almost the perfect pathogen. It transmits readily from person to person. 99% of the people who are infected don't get sick, don't even know they're infected, and it passes on. Almost perfect. Unfortunately, 1% of those get paralytic disease, so it hasn't quite gotten perfect yet. But I think this is amazing that it's adapted so well to replicating and spreading in people. My favorite virus is not one virus, but a class of viruses, the retroviruses. The retroviruses are special because they are genetic parasites. An important part of their life cycle is integrating into the DNA of their host cell. And once there, they have effects on evolution as well as disease, and some of them are even beneficial. Uh, my favorite virus uh, is human adenovirus, which is a moderately sized DNA virus. I think it's really fascinating for multiple reasons. One is the intricacy of its interactions with many, many, many components of the host cell. And studying those interactions has taught us a lot about the way that viruses deal with host systems that could compromise their reproduction. My favorite virus is lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus. So this is a little virus with a huge name, and it doesn't actually cause much disease in humans. But this virus that encodes only four proteins has been the workhorse for most of the major discoveries in uh, pathogenesis and immunology. And in part what makes this such a fascinating virus is that you can get such diverse outcomes in its natural host, the mouse, um, where you can have complete clearance or death of the animal or lifelong persistent infection. Th this virus has so many different ways of establishing infection, um, has provided um, endless uh, opportunities for insights. 